Has anyone ever given a nice guy a chance after they've thrown a tantrum because you didn't let them treat you like a queen? And if you did, how did it work out? I was the nice guy who got turned down for a second date. I said the same balls that any nice guy says when that happens, i.e. all women are the same, say they want nice guys, only date buttholes, etc. She said well, fine, let's have that second date but doesn't it make you feel weird to have to convince someone to date you? Don't you want someone who wants to be with you? Me. Changed absolutely everything about dating for me. I finally allowed him to take me on a date to breakfast. Figured midday would be ideal to meet up in public. I offended him immediately when I spoke to the waitress. I said, we have two when she asked how many we had. He insisted that she was asking him, not me. And I emasculated him in public. I laughed it off as a joke. I grew up with all brothers. Surely, he was trying to be funny. We sat down. The waitress asked for our order. I gave her mine. He groaned and asked her to come back in a second. He told me proper protocol was for me to discuss what I wanted to eat with him, allow him to make the decision, and he was supposed to relay that to the waitress, not me. I told him he was crazy and left, blocked his number, ghosted completely. Oh, finally my time to shine, I guess. In high school I briefly dated a nice guy, complete with an actual fedora in 2000 before they were really a thing. Thanks art school, I had been in a really horrible, abusive relationship with a guy in his 20s just before, and in fairness my nice guy then friend had been instrumental in helping me to realize how fricked up our vibe was and helping me to leave an objectively horrible situation. He then promptly swooped in and started pushing for romantic intimacy between us. He never actually declared feelings. He was never that straightforward about his own thoughts and desires. Just talked about the way I deserve to be treated, like a queen, ofs, and made it clear he felt he was the only one who would give me that. Many of my friends were pushing for it as well. He was nice, after all, and my previous boyfriends had been so objectively awful. I felt a lot of obligation and kind of went along on autopilot. There was a lot of negotiation around anything sexual. I treat you so well. Don't you want to from him and I know you want to treat me like a lady so you'll be okay to take it slow from me. One of the hardest parts was that he clearly wasn't out to hurt me or to frick me. The sexual acts between us. We never slept together, but did other things that seemed like a huge deal to teenaged me. Were only a demonstration. Proof that I loved him. That was what he wanted, but I didn't. And I really thought that meant there was something wrong with me. In the end, I only lasted about a month. He decorated my locker, brought flowers, and left notes for me taped to my desk in each of my classes to celebrate our freaking one month anniversary. I was mortified. My math teacher caught a good look at my face, before I managed to plaster a smile back on. As I opened the note he had left in her class, she asked me to stay back after for what turned out to be one of the most important talks in my life Mrs. Brown. Just the best. I felt panicked telling her over and over how happy and lucky I was. She kept asking questions until I burst into tears and it all just came out. I don't really remember what all she said, but I remember her saying it's okay to be alone. She said it over and over, like Robin Williams going it's not your fault in goodwill hunting. And soon enough I was. I broke up with him, kindly but firmly, and about five different times before he accepted it. He cried. He got angry. Absurdly. Insanely. His mom called my mom, who dropped the hammer on her in a way I haven't seen before or since. I took a ton of crap at school for breaking his heart and ruining his life but I felt so free that I didn't really mind. I dated around, but didn't have a boyfriend again until I was 21. It was, truly, okay, and important, and necessary, to be alone. I'm super curious why his mom would call, and also what your mom said. Seems like a very interesting conversation lol. Yeah, it was my first, and last, Tinder date. I went to the guy's house, figured it would be safe since he had two roommates. He'd lived with these roommates for 6 months and when I asked him their names, he couldn't tell me. First red flag, I was like um, how, any sane person would give some attempt to learn their roommates names. It's not like he was in a basement suite. He shared many common areas with them. When I got there, his house was barely furnished. There was a large TV in the living room and no seating whatsoever. 
he quickly scrambled upstairs to get two child-sized egg chairs and planted them in front of the TV. The TV was playing a movie that was mostly P. Super inappropriate for a first date. I figured he was trying to get me frisky, it just made me uncomfortable. As did the egg chair I didn't fit in. He promptly signaled for me to come sit on his lap. I figured it might be more comfortable than the chair I was in. At one point he went in for a kiss and I thought what the heck, might as well try to enjoy myself. It was awful all I could feel were his teeth and his lizard tongue punching my uvula. I actually had to hold back gags. After that I waited about 15 minutes before signaling that I was going to leave, mostly to preserve his feelings. So after the date I messaged him saying I couldn't see a second date happening. I was as nice as humanly possible. He lost it. You're just a W. Didn't want you anyways. Now you are showing your true colors. And then switched to. I love you though. I was going to bring you to Greece. He flip flopped between those two states and called me. No answer. Every 3 minutes until I blocked him on everything. I deleted Tinder. I read uvula as vulva and was wondering how bad he could have been it was making you gag. My wife did while she was in college. He had constant low self esteem which annoyed her. He also loved making fun of other people. Sounds like he was just a toxic guy. When she broke up with him he wrote a suicide note naming her as the reason and showed up on campus with a gun. Fortunately nothing happened. He got some therapy and wasn't allowed back at the school. Funny how a lot of nice guys who complain about not getting a chance are just buttholes with no charisma. A girlfriend told me that when she was still new to dating, she gave a nice guy a shot. They were in different states and after weeks of owing him a sexy picture or video she agreed to facetime him with a wink wink agreement that things might get steamy. The day comes and this 300 pounds unwashed dude called her. 190 lb. 5 feet 6. Nice but bigger than he liked and suggested she start working out. He then pushed for an in-person visit near him so that he could show her the wonders of carnal things. She ghosted him shortly after that. This is true horror comedy. Does nice guy mean timidly chivalrous in public and wholeheartedly misogynistic in private? Bingo. I had a guy who would constantly ask me out or make really awkward advances for like a year and I finally hit a pretty low point after coming out of a relationship and agreed to go out on a date. But he seemed actually kind of nice and we ended up dating and lived together for a bit. It all turned sour though, when he realized that all his cute punk girl balls he had projected onto me wasn't who I am and I wasn't changing to what he wanted me to be. And then all of a sudden he was out with friends constantly and coming home drunk. The morning he came home, around 6am, telling me he kissed another woman finally woke me up and I left him. He would still send me messages for months after we broke up, not acknowledging my replies saying I have a boyfriend and it's inappropriate to say these things. Even now if I unblock him from social media I'll get a message within a few days saying things like, hey, still beautiful I see or hey cutie sweetie etc etc and he gets blocked again. Ugh. This one is nuts. He apparently won the 10 loss and a yes is still a yes game. You went out with him after he was persistent, and you all seriously dated. He finds out that you're not the person he wants you to be, not that you need to be. Frick that. He then sabotages the relationship, and now he's still carrying the torch. Years later, like, dang dude. My sister did. She is a hairstylist and one of her clients was very aggressive about asking her out. He repeatedly bought flowers concert tickets, and other gifts which he brought to her at work, and she said no each time because he seemed a little off. He got in a car accident and was really badly injured, and she felt sorry for him so she went out with him finally. They dated a few months before breaking up, I don't know the exact reason why, but after that he started stalking her. It's been over 5 years since then and he is still keeping tabs on her. She's reported him to the police multiple times, has a restraining order, and has blocked him on FB everywhere else, but every few months he finds a way to contact her. So if you get weird vibes from someone, don't give them a chance or you might end up with a lifelong stalker like my sister has. I didn't, but my friend did. See, me and this guy had a mutual friend. This guy saw himself as a white knight and would use that term to describe himself. He had a code of honor. And he was always somebody who'd walk the girl home, lend out his jacket, that sort of thing. Well, mutual friend was asked out by this guy, 
and he threw a fit when she turned him down. So, she gave him a chance. At first, she was happy. He pulled out chairs, lent her his jacket, brought her gifts, that kind of thing. But, it became apparent that he was incredibly possessive and things were always on his terms. So, they broke up. About 6 months after this guy was dumped, he decided he liked me. Telling him I wasn't interested didn't work the first or second time. So the third time I decided to just come out and tell him I was asexual. I hadn't done so before because I wasn't sure how he'd take it. He decided that I was lucky he was such a nice guy. Because if he wasn't then he'd have taken that as a challenge. I haven't hung out with this guy since then. Just, no. The old most guys would just but I'm not going to cause I'm nice. The you're lucky I'm nice just sounds rappy and super condescending. Met a guy online and he seemed really nice. He was a tad pushy about meeting up but I ignored that little feeling. We met up shortly after for a quick date. I think we got coffee and chatted. It was instant chemistry. He had two sons and I have two kids, both open to blended families. Goal oriented, smart, easy conversation. We decided to go out again the next night. Really nice date and he was a complete gentleman. He mentioned on the date we'd have to get the kids together to see if they like each other. I laughed it off. Like yeah maybe down the road, we just met and continued the date. Two days later, during our texting I casually mentioned I was going to take my kids on a nature walk and I'd text him when I was back. He shows up with his kids. Now, I don't have it in me to be mean to children so I played nice and introduced myself. They were around 5 and 7, and very sweet boys, but inside I was creeped the frick out. After we parted ways I called him and told him that was not cool at all. Of course, he played victim and hurt until I said I was uncomfortable with what he did. Then it was I'm just trying to love you and your kids, how can we be together if they don't meet and you should appreciate a man trying with a woman with two kids. As if he didn't have two his dang self. He sent angry messages for about a week. I never would respond and he went away. To clarify, this all happened in a two week span. From start to finish. Like that second hand quote I saw in a comment if this were a train I would pull the emergency brakes cause it's going way too fucking fast. Even in the comments most of these guys turn out to be super manipulative. My sister had a nice guy friend in HS. At first he was a great guy but as he got more impatient with her deciding whether or not to date him he became very manipulative. So since we're just friends, I guess it was okay for me to go to versus with my ex and watch her try on lingerie. Even though we broke up, my opinion still matters to her because I'm such a good guy. My innocent and self-conscious sister who didn't want to sound like a control freak no. I guess that's cool. One week later they're dating. Mean comments all throughout the relationship. BTW my friends think you're stupid, but I defended you. BTW my brother thinks you're a B, but I defended you. Now my brother and I aren't talking, you matter more. On the phone, sister talking about her day, boyfriend barely paying attention. Wow, cool, okay, wait what? Sorry playing video games. Sister sincerely, oh well if you're busy I can call you back later. Blow up, are you serious? You really think he'd rather play games than talk to you? That's what you think of Emmy? Are you really that shallow frick you click? After that I told her to dump him but he called back crying and apologizing. So she gave him another chance. Eventually she broke up with him and the next day he skipped school and had his friends tell her that he slit his wrists last night and was in IQ because of her. She called me flipping out saying I needed to take her to the hospital to see him. I showed up at the school with a peach bellany to calm her down low alcohol. She was only a junior after all. What are older sisters for? She was all okay so which hospital is he at? I explained that he wasn't in IQ. He was home playing video games. She didn't believe me. He had already blocked her on FB but I was still his friend so I showed her all his posts front that day taking some me time guys I finally beat Final Fantasy home alone. S mores for lunch? Yeah she never talked to him again. Guys this blew up. Thank you for all your support and adab boys, adagerals. You are the kind of big sister I truly admire. He didn't throw a tantrum but other people convinced me that I need to start giving the nice guys a chance. I didn't really find him attractive but he was really nice to me so I was just like okay fine. 
and then on to two years of a toxic abuse relationship, where he was always right, always belittling me, always reminding me that in a Timur he felt uncomfortable with something or upset about something, it wasn't because he was doing something wrong, it was because I had an abusive childhood and I just didn't understand what real relationships were like. I went to bed crying every night. I remember he never wanted to have sex expect. The only times he wanted to have sex was after he broke me down and I cried myself to sleep then he'd come to bed saying I just love you so much. You're so amazing. The best. I felt so unloved and desperate for affection I'd have sex with him but feel so empty and alone afterwards. It wasn't until I was free of that relationship I realized how fricked up it was. I'm still trying to forgive myself for allowing myself to be in that situation for so long. I'm so happy I escaped. Yes, I've had partners use the excuse of oh, this is normal, you just don't know because you were abused as a kid, even through extensive therapy, I still fall prey to that nonsense. Now I just stay single, I'm much happier that way, I hope you find happiness, either in a couple or not. I dated one for two years. He seemed nice and was happy when I first started dating him cause girls didn't give him a chance due to his looks. He was super nerdy. I was 16 and he was 19. He was very needy and always demanded we do what he wanted. I missed out on a lot of things, including missing out going to see Phantom of the Opera with his mom, because he didn't want to go and would get sick at the last minute. When I lost my virginity to him, he said I basically raped him because he didn't realize he wasn't ready for something like that till after we had sex. About a year and a half into our relationship he got religious. So then, whenever we had sex, he would want us to pray for forgiveness afterwards. But if I refused sex, I was a cold B. I actually left him for a female partner, I am B, and that's when I realized that it was a super unhealthy relationship. Never have I ever heard of someone praying after sex. That's like serial killer crap. Glad you're okay. Yes I did once. And I wish I didn't. He wasn't a nice guy after all. He treated me like I was the ugly one. I never felt more crappy in my whole life than when I was with him. I should have known. Yes. The tantrums continued throughout the relationship. He was very controlling. If I was out with friends he would be upset that I was having fun without him. He ended up cheating on me and dumping me only to beg me back. He semi staked me for a couple of years. Had an online blog about what I did each day and tried to befriend my exes. That sounds awful. I'm glad you shook him eventually. But Jesus Christ. What a power tripping freakazoid. I dated a guy in high school. Relationship was okay but it was long distance so we amicably ended it. He was the one that brought it up and I agreed. Fast forward 6 months and he randomly messages me. Everything is friendly until I mention that I have a new boyfriend. The conversation did a quick 180 from hi how are you to you'll never find someone like me and how could I start dating again so soon. I blocked his butt real fast. And he was right. I never did find another guy like him because I married the new boyfriend and we're still together 18 years later. You'll never find someone like me. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, I'm about done with people trying to get in my pants out of sheer desperation. I don't think this is quite the same thing as giving them a chance because I'm already in a relationship and I'm not into anyone else. But I did put up with seriously creepy crap both before I was in a relationship and after from this guy. He acted like unsolicited gifts were the way to work his way in, even worse when I'm in a relationship already, then had multiple unintelligible meltdo ones if and when I so much as mentioned my boyfriend's name. I don't get it. All I do is treat people like people with respect and it lands me a bunch of people who only care about themselves there who want nothing more than to drop their crappy lives and poor decision making skills on top of mine. Anyway, I'm taken and my boyfriend is the best person in the world for me. Your second paragraph is the most tragic bit. All of my cheerful gregarious female friends have learned to rein themselves in and be intentionally colder to strangers because otherwise they become creeper bait. Yeah, I dated one. He was of the extra rare breed. A gay nice guy. He felt entitled to sex and affection and just couldn't take no for an answer. And he'd randomly pick me up and carry me around to protect me because he thought it was cute. 
He'd give me random gifts and flowers and expected affection in return, which was very uncomfortable. Being put on a pedestal and were hip doesn't feel right. It's weird and dehumanizing. Don't do that. A lot of odd things like that. I was one. Until I was in my mid-twenties. Raised by narcissistic parents. I had no clue how to relate to the opposite sex. I would try so hard to be a good guy, polite, accommodating, etc. Never had a clue. Painful to remember. I'll clarify. I am married. I've been married for 20 years. I get a whole slew of messages on social media from time to time from random people wanting to talk to me. Normally I'm pretty cordial. I'm very upfront about being married. Even then I don't mind the random chit chat. Once I'll let them know that I'm married. That's when I'm called a W or a S. I also get the same sentence you really missed out. I would have treated you like a queen so my question is. To anyone who know. If you have dated a guy who acted like this. How did it turn out? I was once in a similar situation. I dated a sweet guy. But honestly. Sweet is subjective. He was a gentleman. But he insisted on always opening the car door for me. He literally would not let me touch the car handle, like at all, letting me eat first always, instead of both at the same time cause honestly it's not a biggie for me, commented that I should never cut my hair, etc. I felt like I was with a man from the 50s, it was draining to be treated like a queen instead of an equal, other than that, he was okay, anyways, when I broke up with him. I felt like he didn't want to let me go, like I had to explain over and over again that I wasn't feeling it and that he deserved someone that would feel the same way about him. He hung up the phone with, you don't know what you missed out on, mmmm, okay, I guess. Way too many times in college, I had guys in the friend zone who I decided to give a chance because I was stupid and I felt sorry for them. I last straw was when a guy took me shopping. I said yes in lonely desperation on a Friday night. This was a Saturday afternoon. After every store I went into he would either criticize me for not wanting him to buy me anything, I'm not much of a shopper anyways, or ask me for sex because he bought me a used video game I wanted. Never again. There's a good reason insoles are insoles. Yes. Two months later he forced me into his car, sped insanely fast with metal music blaring to a very rural area. Pulled into a field, raped me, then paced back and forth for a while. I'm guessing he was wondering if he should kill me or not. I told him what a great drive I had and suggested we get donuts. I wrote help and his nameplate number on a paper towel and stuck it on the mirror. I still have a hard time comprehending everything about that night. Just say no if someone feels off. You don't owe anyone something because they pitch a hissy. I just FB stalked. It appears he had sex with a girl from his work. The condom failed the first time they had sex. She married him, had two more kids back to back, then went to single and started posting a bunch of DV survivor posts. It also appears her mental age is much younger than her physical one. I was certain he was trying to get me pregnant. I thought I was being weird, but I guess my instinct was right. Poor girl. Freaking heck. 0 to 100 in holy crap fast. I don't get it. Being treated like a queen means that you get a plot of land and subjects, right? These guys seem to do the opposite. It was my first experience on Occupid. The guy seemed okay on paper. We swapped on nude pictures so none of us would be surprised with the way we looked. We talked on Skype for two weeks because at the time I was in campus town and scrolling Occupid for my hometown. I told him I would be back home after finals and that it would take 2-3 weeks before we could meet in person. It was good to talk to someone who wasn't outright trying to sexualize fetishize me. I don't remember the converse, but I thought it was good enough to meet him in person. Anyway, so we meet. I got dressed up and he was in t-shirt and cargo pants. I bought us both a latte, it was a coffee date. We sat down, and he talked mostly about himself and his job. At some point, he stood up, walked behind me, and started giving me a shoulder rub. While I was seated, I never asked for a massage and why would I accept one in public? I got bored, so I pretexted a family supper to leave and he was like up, oh, too bad. I could have had brought you home and I thought I thought I told him already it wasn't going to happen so soon. I decide to let him know on Skype that there wasn't any spark and that I wished him good luck on Occupid. 
and he exploded at me. How all women are the same. We want nice gentle guy, but won't give them a chance. How sparks are made up by romcom to trick women and in real life it doesn't happen instantly. But how I led him on because we talked 4 weeks and now I just decide not to push it further. How he is done with women. And so on. Then he blocked me. Comma how all women are the same. We want nice gentle guy, but won't give them a chance. I love how in his creepy mind, literally going on a date somehow isn't being given a chance. Dunno if this applies as me giving a second chance. Also, this was in my game PMs after I played a mobile game with this guy. So the start of the conversation was very generic nice guy. Started by being pretty cool, but asking for nudes when he figured out I was a girl. Then saying I was a nonsense bee when I refused to comply. I just said whatever. Text me later if you want gaming still. His words did a full mood swing and suddenly he is the cool gaming guy again. This did scare me though. He was very insistent in the nude stuff and then changed. Maybe he was plotting more advances later and I actually got tired of the game so I just ghosted him and uninstalled it. I was celebrating my last day in a city I had lived in for 4 years and had invited a bunch of friends out for a night on the town. And one of these friends was a self-proclaimed chauvinist who insisted to walk on the outside of the sidewalk. So I thought it was uncomfortable that he kept on switching to the outside as I didn't feel I wanted that treatment. There are no horse carriages that splash crap on people anymore. I don't need a walking fess's shield. Thanks. But he basically ignored my lack of comfort with that and continued to explain that it's his duty to do that. He ended up eventually full out yelling at me and I cried and left. That was my own night to hang with people before departing. Anyways we loosely stayed Facebook friends just because I feel like he is a litmus test to the crazy crap the internet is doing to the opinions of people and I'd like to keep a tab on how bad things are getting. The end. Ugh. I remember walking around with a friend one night in our city a long time ago. We were both 20ish. I was walking on the street side of the sidewalk. A random guy stopped us and lectured my friend on treating ladies right, which apparently included a switching places on the sidewalk. People and their weird, outdated ideas. I wouldn't call myself a nice guy but I'm a people pleaser to an unhealthy degree. My wife was the first to consistently call me out on my thoughtfulness that left her feeling overwhelmed constantly. She consistently informed me that I need to chill out and focus on myself, not on her. That she would be just fine and I can leave her alone. We're approaching 3 years married next month. Still have things to work on but her ability to consistently and lovingly, eventually, tell me how my urge to please her was not pleasing to her was monumentally helpful. Took me a long time to understand it. And I thought I had strong self-awareness before I met her. If you think there's a glimmer of hope there, please do your best to lovingly tell that man child he can chill out. It helped me to be asked if I had fears or thoughts about why I do those things. To challenge my notion of normal and let me self reflect in it. Still took a while to get it. Out of the office this is an interesting perspective. Thanks for sharing. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.